For its 15th leg, the Longines Global Champions Tour comes to the Netherlands and its spiritual home in Valkensvaart. But nowadays, that means the state of the art tops international arena. And a large and knowledgeable crowd was in place, ready for the Grand Prix. After London, Peter De Vos of Belgium remains our leader, just in front of Ben Mayer, London's winner, with Daniel Deusser in third. Then Niels Branziels, Kevin Stout and Michael van der Vluten make up our top six. Let's have a look at round one of the Longines Global Champions Tour Grand Prix presented by Tenor. Uliana Vetsani setting, as ever, a true Grand Prix test. Not the tightest of time allowed, but my goodness, there's a lot of jumping to do. Getting an early draw, and at this stage we still awaited our first clear round. On home soil is one of the Stahl Tops riders, Alberto Zorzi and Ulan de Coquerie. Oh, you can see why he shushes her into these oxes a little bit. Alberto unfortunately caught out at the middle part of the triple combination line and also one from home at fence 12 for a total of eight faults. Riding H&M legend of love, Olivier Philippartz came eighth in the draw. Two big fences to finish. Come on, old girl. Up you come. Oh, there we ladies, go. well done. Time is not an issue, 72.92, and uh, it is clear round number one. Immediately following him, French Olympian Simon de Lex, the former world number one, with one of the horses that helped him to that accolade, Hermes Rien, proving why they are one of the top combinations in the sport. Simon de Lex. That's a good round, yeah. a very well ridden round. Well, it's clear round number two. And we definitely have a jump off. European champion Peter Fredriksen and Catch Me Not jump the first couple, and then Peter, feeling something's not quite right, elects to retire the horse on course. Qualifying once again for the Grand Prix, Kibel and Georgina Blumberg. They were jumping out of their skin, delivering exactly the sort of round you could only dream of until dreams turn to nightmares. One more. Come on, squeeze, One squeeze, more. squeeze, One squeeze. No! Oh, you could see it coming, couldn't you? The last down at fence 30. Four fourths for Georgina. Series leader Peter Devos came forward for his chance then with the great a pass. The Belgian set off in great shape, but an unlucky pole out of the double at fence four early on the track meant that he knew he wouldn't make the jump off here in Valkensvaart. Stepped up on the gas now, because we've only actually got two on four. And he's 76 8 -0. he's the fastest of them now. Well, DeVos finishing on the four fault, 76 8 as you say, drops a pole from him, goes into fourth place. With twin brother Olivier Philippartz already qualified for the jump off, it was the turn of Nicola Philippartz riding Katanga van het Dingeshof. The young Belgium jumped clear through the double but was caught out by the Oxer just after at fence five, giving him four faults and meaning he would also sit out today's jump off. He speeded up now to try and be the quickest four because we're not going to get double figures of clears. Quite quick. Yeah, leaves him on the four there for uh, Nicola Philippard's Katanga Van Hees uh, Dingenshoff 70.92. The combination we saw win in a very similar arena in Paris. Take a chance on me and Christian Almond for Germany. Well, they took the tenor vertical at fence six with them. Then the middle part of the triple combination. And the fence just won from home at number 12. Christian Allman with a very uncharacteristic 12 faults in the first round. After some mixed results just recently, there was a weight of expectation on Harry Smolders and Don VHPZ. Harry's been working really hard with this horse and delivered the clear he wanted, the clear he needed. Harry Smolders, two to go for our fifth clear. One more. Come on. Come Find on, the Harry. energy. Got oh, it. Got it. That's yeah. more like it. That is much more like it. 79.81. Michael van der Fleurs gives a respected round of applause to Harry Smolders and Don VHPZ NOP. And uh, much more back to what we expect to give them. Clear round number five. A very deliberate round from them. And uh, a good confidence boost for this top class pair. And so at the conclusion of the first round, it was going to be eight qualified for a jump off, including Olivier Philippartz, Simon de Lest, Christian Kukuk, Michael van der Vleuten, Harry Smolders, Marcus Eining, Kevin Stoat and Julien Epeyat.
Well, either way, it will be entertaining for our crowd and for all of you watching at home. Here we go with our first to go, Olivier Philippards and H&M Legends of Love. The uh, Belgian to start us off. Belgium, Netherlands, France, Germany, all those nations represented here. Let's see. Several good experience ones going amongst that group. Like this one to lead things off. Olivier not qualified for the Super Grand Prix yet, so every chance from the front. Big reception there, uh, brother Nicola watching. They'll yeah, have had a final discussion between those two. Probably almost telepathy between those two as well. Everything they produced, they've done brilliantly. Now let's see right. around the track. It's 13 year old. I just want to come back to that auction that he's just passed there. To take, give it a wide berth and a good old run at it because that's what they need to do because it's a long way to that tall vertical. Here he comes. Fence five is the first. Five, six, seven, eight, still eight. Now the long way from this fence back here to the second two parts of the combination. Two, three, six, seven, eight, nine strides, a long way, isn't it? I don't think anybody can get there on eight. Now, this fence has gone up even bigger. And now turn back. 23 seconds he was over that fence there. Turn back to this fence on the angle. And gallops down to the last. A long, long way down to this tall vertical to finish. This is the last fence. Takes a pull there to make sure and gets away with it. What a good start. 37-34. It is uh, look of, well, is it enough from uh, brother, but Olivier Philippard's H&M Legend of Love. 37-34. Steve, they could do little more than that, I think. I think they could. I think they could, you know. I mean, it was a... Cons I wouldn't say a conservative round. He was sharp. The mare's very quick. She's quick across the ground, but she's yeah. left everything up. He's given them plenty to do, but he's beatable. I think that's about the size of that. We'll see. It, um, whatever happens, look at the size of that fence there to gallop to at the last. That Longines fence is enormous. And a galloping track, a long, long way down to that last fence. And here's one that can gallop to it. Yeah, this will set the pace. Simon de Lester, Hermes Ryan, the 14-year-old for the Frenchman. You see the eight strides from five to six. I don't think there's any point in trying to take a stride out because if he jumps this fence here and goes flat out to the next one, he's going to, and he is doing, look, he's going to go too far. They'll go too far that way, but this horse turns on a dime, doesn't he? And that was a lovely turn there. This is a quick horse. If he gets away with this, he'll take a lot of beating because he's faster already. The other boy was, what, 23 no. seconds? He's, no, he's had it. He was a bit faster. I think we ought to take a time check out of the double well, combination, Well, no, just actually. look at the split time. It said he was a little bit slower, but I would, I would have gone with you that he felt faster. But that's what they've got. And uh, overline, let's see in the end. 38.70, yeah, yeah touch slower, slower than Olivier Philippe Having had the fence down, he would have took the yeah. pace off a bit, Steve, I would think, because, you know, if he'd have had two fences down, he was eighth, and that was that. He was trying to sneak a place, yeah. not sneak a place, but hang on to a place. And that was a... Look at the size of that oxer. Oh. You know, when you see Hermes Ryan struggle to jump a fence, it's big. Whoop. Absolutely. <laughs> There is supporting team. Brave try. Very brave try. Finished on the four, but it's he who dares who wins. But uh, not quite there this time. So, Olivier Philippard stays ahead. H&M Legend of Love, clear 37-3-4. Christian Kukuk, 10-year-old uh, Quinton. I don't know what Christian, Christian will do with this horse. I don't know whether he's got the mileage to win this, whether he considers he's got the mileage or the pace. He's got the jump and we've got the jockey. And the horse is a superstar. But this is no place to play percentages, no, really. No, no, exactly. Yeah. Several of our grand jury overlooking. Chris Stefan Annabrook in the centre. Right. Cook, cook. what's it's the game plan? Taking a long, long run to the first, quite wisely. Plenty of room to get at it. Holding eight, turn back, 
You can only go the shortest way. You can't go the pace of uh, Olive, Olivia Philippotts' mare. They're two totally different horses. And this is a sensible round. He's not going to win it, but he's going to get a very good place. If he can get this out of the way, he'll jump those last two fences out. Easy on the way out. Tactical round, impeccably ridden on a very, very good horse indeed. Just get this last fence out of the way and he'll be on to a good place because we've got yeah. some fireworks to come yet. Now, yes. whether they're going to go clear or whether they're going to have fences down, I don't know and I don't think anybody else does. But well, that, now we, that was the way to do that, in my opinion. Exactly. Nicely done. Christian Cuckoo sensibly ran with Quintino clearing 44.96. And as you say, not had the mileage yet between the pair of them to go really firing at the Grand Prix, but a very good, some good early turns, but you yeah. say just, just not necessarily shaving a lot off in Great terms of educational speed. round, yeah. Steve, actually. Yeah. You know, it was beautifully done, that was absolutely copybook stuff. Thinking of the future, and uh, the future lies ahead for uh, what have we got? Ooh, five more of them. You see, he's a totally different horse to that mare. Yeah. Totally different. She's a blood and isn't she? A real thoroughbred type mare. The other one's a big, big jumper. This is uh, a certainly one that come out of, can come out of the blocks very quickly indeed. Michael Fentifluson, the 11-year-old Dana Blue. They've got the pace. They've shown it already this year. Yeah. This is one that will not be holding back. Third, no, so what's our leading time? 37.34. Yeah, he'll be having a cut all right. No point going there or attempting to go there on seven. You'll mow it down for one thing or go far too far into the corner. That's a good turn. Let's have a time check out of this double. I think would be more accurate for the future. There you go. 18. And it's about 20, 22 or three here. It's just a bit slower, I would say. Good turn there, though. Ooh, that's a brave one to that. Now gallop to the last, 37.34. He surely, surely, surely got him, hasn't he? Oh, he has. Yeah, yes. 36.80. It's the uh, run to the last that makes the difference. Michael van der Vluten and Dana Blue looking to claim a second Grand Prix of the season. He won in Monaco with Beauville Z. He's already through to the Super Grand Prix, and that could bode well for Olivier Philippartz sitting in second. But, Steve, just as we saw from the split time, a fraction down, but it was that last line that he made the suddenly, difference. You know, he just knew that he got the trouble out of the way and then galloped home, all the way home. Knew his horse, knew he could jump it. These are big fences now, aren't they? My goodness, they were big to start with. They're even bigger now. Look at the size of that to gallop to at the last fence. Oh, <laughs> it chucks Michael up and catches him the other side. New leader, anyway. New leader, Michael Fentiflusen leads the way then. Dana Blue. Olivier Philippartz has to pace and wait now to whether he will go through to Prague or not to those playoffs. Michael already through with a win this season. Uh, Joss Valoy and uh, Rob Herkstra talking things through. Harry Smolders is who they're going to be watching. Groom Alex just the side there. Harry Smolders, Don VHPZ NOP. Been there, done it. Good confidence building round so far this week. How much will he really test here? We will see. Has he got the legs? Has he got the speed? He's done it before. Done it plenty you of know, times before. Yeah, plenty of times before. Why don't shouldn't he? Don't think we need to ask that one anymore. No. You know, he got a superb ride to start off with. We're going to have to do something a bit special to catch the front too. Getting the angle right, look. That's got, a, got that out of the way. Very good turn here. That was a great turn from Harry. What was he? 18 coming out of here, wasn't he? Not much in it. He's a little bit slower. About 20 years slower. They were 23, weren't they, landing over that? Can he make it up here? He can gallop to the last. He won't be afraid of that. Go no, on, he's Harry. going. 36.80. Not, not much in it, enough. but he's not going to get it. Not going to be enough, but it's a good round from them. 38.38. Good to see them back where they belong up there. Harry Smolders. Don VHP said good confidence building round for them after a sticky part of the season. And they go into third place. Olivia Philippartz in second. Michael Fentifluson still leads the way.
He's, you know, when he got the trouble out of the way, that dodgy oxer that he's just jumped, he knew, look how he can trust this horse. If this horse would jump this fence all day long at the gallop, he's so careful, he knew he could ram him down there, picked up a lot of time, but it wasn't enough. Happy enough with that. But look what we've got to come. Well, you've got three more who are going to take a real spin at this now. Michael van der Vleusen waiting there with Dad. Those remember the pictures from Madrid as they were waiting and he got pipped into second. Marcus Enning was pipped into second here last year by Frank Schutters. And remember, Frank was early to go. Marcus was late to go. We thought Marcus had done enough. And when he crossed the line, actually... He yes, had... we were surprised yeah. how quick Frank was. I can remember it so clearly, vividly. Same horse. So, now, will this where, be revenge? Where is he going to find it? Where is he going to find it? Because if, there's, if it's there to be found, find it, he will. That's one place. He's not faster than Harry Smolders there. He's got to accelerate somewhere. A bit slower, isn't he? Second back. Qu quick there, but a bit slower again. Slower than the leaders, I think. He's got to have to gallop flat out. Oh, look at the angle. And now down to the last, 36.80. This is going to be very close, but I don't think he's quite got there. He's steaming along, but it's not going to be enough either. 38.56. It is clear for uh, Marcus Enning, and still Michael van der Vleuten keeps the lead. And uh, the news is he goes into fourth place, which is good news for Olivier Philippartz, who still sits in second in that qualifying position for the Super Grand Prix. Marcus Enning into fourth. Coronado, I mean, he's one of the best horses in the world and has been for a few years, but he wouldn't be quite the fastest. You know, he is over a big track, and this is a big track, but, I mean, he hasn't quite got the pace to, obviously, because he's just gone into fourth place, and make no mistake, my, Marcus was trying. But, you know, you, to win this, you're going to need something like the next two horses, or the very next horse, Kevin Stokes' horse, is like lightning. Final French flourish. Two for France. Kevin Stout for Joy Van Sogfleet HDC and then Julien Appéart, Virtuous Champex. It's not done yet. Michael van der Vleuten leads the way, clear 36.80. It is father and son there, pensively watching this out. Michael knows what's coming up with these final two. There's our course designer watching how this is going to play out. Kevin Stout of France, then Julien Appéart. Two of the fastest around. Buckle your seat belts. Here we go. Where are they going to find it? I don't know. Oops. Tight. Yeah, they just always lost the stirrup. Got it back again. Good stride there. He's a, a little bit slower out of there, but he's got the legs to go and gallop at the last. That's a good turn there. That's a, oh, look at the angle here. Oh, can he get the back rail? Yes. 36.80. This is very close indeed. He's got to fly this. He's not quite going to get there. He's not. 37.44. He's going to be just back, but he will go. Oh, he goes to third. So Olivier Philippart still that bit quicker. <laughs> Kevin Stoke just outside that qualifying place. Olivier Philippartz hangs on to it at the moment in second, 37-3-4. Kevin Stokes, 37-44. Shook his head there. He couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Look at the angle there. And a massive oxer. And look at the pace. Oh, there we go. I, ha I hate to say it at the risk of being banned from going, going to France again, but Kevin Stokes misses out on a place at the moment on going to Prague by a tenth of a second. Really? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, tenth of a second. Michael can't believe it. He's still hanging on in there. This might just blow it all out of the water. Last to go, Julien Apayar, Virtuous Champex. Now, remember, he has already qualified, so uh, I can say Olivier Philippartz will qualify for Prague. Off because third. because if, Julien, if he wins it. Yeah. Even if he wins it, because Julien is already qualified, Michael is already qualified, so Olivier Philippartz is heading to the playoffs. Who is going to be our winner, Michael or Julien? One of the fastest men on the planet, if he's on the right horse. He's got to pick up now. He wants to be 18 or inside out of this next Longines double. Oh. No, we've seen the winner. The pace that did it.
Well, what a jump off. One would have to say that Olivetsani take a bow. He's done it again. At the beginning of the class, there would have been a lot of people that might have said, well, he's overdone it a bit today. He's not going to get the clears. But he didn't get them, he did. He would have been aiming for seven or eight clears. He wouldn't have wanted double figures. And he got the eight clears over a huge course and uh, pr produced another brilliant combination. And the double, what a... What a <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Father and son. Two top-class riders, greatly supportive, obviously, of each other. Two totally contrasting styles. But, uh, two very popular riders, two very, very nice guys. Only live about 15 minutes up the road from here. In Vulcan Squad. So our final results see Michael van der Vleuten take his second win of the season. This time it's with Dana Blue. Olivia Philippartz in second with H&M Legend of Love. And that gives the young Belgian his ticket to the Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix in Prague in November. Kevin Stout makes hay while the sun shines in terms of ranking points with a podium today, third with Fajoy van Sorkvliet HDC. And after his second victory of the season, we caught up with Michael van der Vleuten. Home win, that always makes a difference in your home country. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big pleasure for me. Um, it's, it's, of course, very nice to, to win in front of the home crowd. And it's the first time I, uh, I, I win this Grand Prix here in Valkenswaard. So it's, uh, it's a big one for me. It's been some season for you, hasn't it? Winning in Monaco, but you just got beaten with Dana earlier on in the season in Madrid. And that makes a difference here. Yeah, she's a great mare. She always fights for me. And... Uh, it's a careful horse, and um, yeah, she, she's a natural, very fast horse, and that, that's what you need these days. If you see uh, how many good riders there were in the jump off, um, it's not easy to make the difference. So uh, Dana Blue is a horse who can uh, who can help me a lot with this. I saw you and Dad were quite nervously waiting out of the back when you saw you'd still got Julian Epe, our Kevin Stout to go. What were the thoughts? What was there? Didn't look much discussion. No, you can't do so much anymore after your own uh, your own round. And uh, these days, before the, uh, you haven't win before the last rider uh, come through the finish line. So it's always a bit, uh, you know, it's, uh, those minutes, they take long. Well, it's a home victory. It's a big victory. Savour it. Enjoy it. Well done, Michael. All right. Thank you very much. An unbelievable ride from him to get that close. Here's the head-to-head. -head. There won't be a lot in this. The two greys going head to head. Now they're both taking the same number of, but there, Olivier is in front there at the moment. Nearly landing level there. Don't forget there's only, uh, what, half a second in it anyway from Michael van der Vleuten. Now he's in front, look, there on the right hand side. Now where does Michael get it? There turns right back there very very quick and gallops to the last look and overtakes Olivier on the way to the last flies that and that wins him the class after leg 15 here in Valkensvard Peter de Vos remains the series leader with Kevin Stout though moving up to third and Michael van der Vleuten up to fourth as a result of today's performances please all rise for the national anthem yes, they of the Netherlands Hutt Willemers rise the majority for their home national anthem for the Netherlands, Michael van der Vleuten. A very happy Michael van der Vleuten. We will now ask to Judith Menen, brand manager of Lorty Netherlands, to offer the official watch to our winner, Michael van der Vleuten. After a fantastic weekend of sport here in Valkensvaard, the Netherlands, the next stop on the tour is going to be the eternal city of Rome for the next Longines Global Champions Tour Grand Prix.